Guys, thank you so much for uh, joining us today and coming to our presentation, how to get more customers to your website using Google Ads. Um, so just a quick introduction as to who we are. So my name is Michael. I'm the Strategic Partnerships Manager at Digital Gearbox. Hello. <laughs> and I'm Becky Hopkin. I'm Managing Director of Digital Gearbox. Hello from me. So if you have uh, any questions, as I said, please pop them in the chat box. Leave your email address in as well, just in case you need to run off. Uh, or if you can, if you have time, stick around for our exclusive post-presentation Google Hangout. The link to that is also in the chat, but I also share it later on as well. So are you looking for more customers? Are you tired of high cost, low impact advertising? Want a marketing channel that you can control? Well, Google Ads is what you need. But before we begin, just a little bit more about us. So I'm going to hand over to Becky. Thanks, Michael. So for those of you who haven't heard of us, uh, Digital Gearbox is a specialist PPC agency based in not so sunny today, Bista. Uh, there's a nice picture of our lovely team. Shout out to Johnny and Bella who aren't with us today. Um, also our office dog Nala and office plant Curtis, can't forget them too. Uh, collectively, we've got over 20 years experience in the digital marketing world. And Google Ads is what we live and breathe pretty much day in, day out, except for the weekends, we do have them off. Um, and we've seen and managed a heck of a lot of Google Ads accounts across a wide variety of industries. And we've seen some really terribly managed accounts, not by us, I'd like to add, um, that have wasted hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But we've also seen some really fantastic accounts that are working wonderfully well to help businesses grow every day. Um, it's all about the setup and ongoing management. Uh, we're also a Google Partner Agency. Uh, that's a status that can only be gained when agencies complete yearly online assessments and have proven to Google that they can meet certain performance criteria when managing over £10,000 worth of marketing budgets. We are a completely results driven company and I'm pretty proud of some of the results we achieved for our partners. In 2019, we were able to drive 1.3 million clicks across our customers' websites and this resulted in over 33,000 leads and 2.1 million in sales. On average, we're able to generate £3.50 for every pound spent. Not bad, eh? I really wish we had more time today to give you some more in-depth case studies about some of the amazing results that people are getting with Google advertising. But today, we're going to really focus on giving you as many tips to help you along a way with achieving your own. So this presentation should help you if you've already have Google Ads campaigns, if you've tried Google Ads in the past, or you're just looking to get campaigns up and running without all those growing pains. And we're gonna split this into three sections. So we're gonna talk about search advertising, which is all about being found in the right place at the right time by the right people. Those active buyers, those ones we really wanna get in front of. Display advertising, which is all about building brand awareness and attracting brand new visitors to your site. And remarketing, also known as retargeting, which is all about remaining visible post-visit by potential customers. It's also great for establishing loyalty and customer advocacy. So I'm gonna hand back to Michael to kick us off with getting more customers with search. Getting more customers with search. So here we go. So you guys probably know what search looks like. If you don't, here's a little diagram. So you go to Google, you type in something like solicitors, and at the top, you are going to get your ads. So Google is a pay to play platform now. Um, so if you want prominence in Google search engine results pages, you probably want to use search to get ads in front of people. We have some tips on how you can maximize your results, however. So the first tip being consider the full customer journey. So there is a constant trade off between driving enough traffic to your website and hitting your profit targets. Um, as, as you can see on this slide, we put together an inverted triangle that basically charts the entire journey based on the terminology. So at the bottom of the triangle are your brand terms, for example, Argos. There's a limited amount of traffic here, but the profit will be very high. And at the top of the triangle, you, you have some very you know unspecific terms like researching terms, the terms that your customers are going to use when they start researching and start looking for what they are looking for. Um, if you haven't tested any of these levels, such as competitive terms, uh, category phrases, is even brand plus, uh, you might be missing an opportunity to reach your customers at a different point in the customer journey. So definitely consider, you know, stretching out to make sure that you're hitting all of those touch points when people are looking, because you want to make sure that you're getting in front of people at the right time, the right place. That's the key here. Tip two, increasing your click through rates. So we've got a couple of different examples here. The first one being to utilize ad extensions. So it's incredible how many people don't do this, but ad extensions expand your 
add without the additional information uh, with additional information so uh, call buttons location information uh, extra links to other pages on your website uh, additional text call out snippets everything really um, these provide these provide businesses with the opportunity to give people more reasons to choose your business over the competition so we've got an example here one ad is using ad extensions one is not um, sorry to these guys if, if you are here and and I'm using your ads as examples um, but you know the, the ad at the top is clearly using Using ad extensions it's taking up more Google real estate it's taking up more space um, and you know people's time is, is limited and the more time they're going to be spending on you because you're taking up all that space it can only be a good thing so definitely look at that that's going to really help increase your click-through rate by several percentage points um, also consider using emotional triggers so if you appear in the search engine results page the chances are high that you're selling the product the the person is looking for um, and you know we are emotional creatures we search you know with you know with the intent of having the product or service solve a problem you know and that's what Google wants to do Google is a problem solving platform so if you can utilize uh, people's pain points or, or use the emotional triggers here that we have in this example so roof edge protection systems keep everyone safe on the roof um, what you're doing is you're appealing to people's need to be safe it's a very powerful concept it's one that isn't utilized enough and you know it harking back to the days of the original days of the advertising when people used to sit around in smoking rooms coming out with these concepts you know the emotion will drive the traffic and it will get that relevant click coming in from the people who are interested in you Increasing your click-through rate, focusing on quality scores. So quality scores are made up of three components, um, expected click-through rate, landing page experience, and ad relevance. So they all combine to create this score, 10 out of 10. Um, the higher your quality score, the less you will potentially pay per click. So um, if you have low quality scores, you will always be at a disadvantage, unfortunately. Now, taking the time to look at how the keywords fit into your landing pages has always been critical. You know, websites are so easy to customize now. Um, you should be making sure that your keywords that you are utilizing are represented on your landing pages. If they're not, have a look at it. Add these columns into your dashboard and see where you're potentially falling short and look at how you can make these adjustments to improve these quality scores. They are so important. And finally, pay attention to your search impression share. So search impression share is basically also is market share, really. So it's the impressions that you've received divided by the estimated number of impressions you are eligible to receive. What we do here is we look at search impression share that's been lost and it's been lost either by budget. Uh, so basically the metric estimates how often your ad didn't show on the search network due to a low budget or search impression lost by rank. So again, this is calling back to the quality score. So um, ad rank is calculated using your bid and the quality score. So if you are losing search impression share due to budget, you might want to consider putting more in there or maybe um, reducing the number of campaigns you've got to make sure that spreads a little bit better. Or if it's rank, again, go and look at those quality scores. You might be losing search impression share because of those low quality scores. And final tip for search um, for search is to segment everything. And we are going to mention segmentation a lot in this talk. So segment the campaigns by the product or service and make it clear what the campaign goal is. So a well-organized segmented account is the absolute key to making sure that you are appealing to the right people at the right time, you're covering all of your services, uh, and also just from a management perspective, you know, making sure that you're seeing um, what's working, what's not working, uh, and then that allows you to create the action plan to make the necessary adjustments to improve um, what you're doing, to improve the results. So segment everything, everything you possibly can. Um, and this, this tip applies to shopping as well, which we're, we're not talking about that much here, but we, we can do in our Hangout afterwards. Um, shopping when you get the product feed if you can segment that product feed by product id that will it's a game changer because what you can do is you can set individual budgets by your products and when we've done this we've typically been able to you know massively reduce the cost per conversion um because we are focusing on the products that are really bringing in that revenue um so that's everything for search i appreciate that i've barreled through that if you have any questions please again leave them in the chat um and now back over to becky for display Thank you, Michael. So actually, uh, this is a tip in itself is think about using display advertising. So I think when everyone thinks of Google advertising, they think of the traditional search ads that Michael's just talked about. But they don't really know much or even know of what display advertising is. So just to quickly introduce what it is, um, it, it, display advertising is where you can place adverts onto other people's websites, videos and apps that are part of the Google display network. 
Now, the Google Display Network consists of over 2 million websites, and it allows you to reach over 90% of the internet users worldwide. And there's some really great benefits to using display advertising. Firstly, it allows you to reach new audiences who might not be actively searching for your goods or services, but might be interested. This is particularly poignant if you've got something that people wouldn't even know exists, so they wouldn't be searching for it. It's really similar, if you um, comparable, sorry, if, uh, to the likes of Facebook advertising and LinkedIn advertising in that you're targeting people by certain characteristics and demographics. But people don't often think of, that you can do that with Google, so display is the answer for that. And it's one of the easiest ways to quickly and cheaply increase the volume of traffic to your website. So you came here because you wanted to know how to get more people to your website. Display offers you the option to get the most for the lowest cost. The average cost per click for display is just 48p. However, we actually see um, cost per click is much lower than this at Digital Gearbox, more around the 20 to 30 pence mark. So you can get a lot of bang for your buck there. And the great thing about display ads is you don't need to have nicely created banner ads to do display advertising. So whilst we've got an example of one on the slide there, you can use responsive image ads, um, a tool on the Google Campaign Manager to create your own banners by simply uploading a logo, an image, and then put, putting some text and it will create one for you in every size that is needed for Google display advertising, because there's lots of different shapes and spaces available on the AdSense network. So, that's my, my tip within a tip now, um, is to research and carefully select your audiences. So it's all about making sure you're getting in front of the people that are gonna be most likely to buy. Now there's loads of options available and you can combine them as well. So I'm gonna talk really quickly about the different options there are and go into detail about some of my favorites. So there's placement targeting, which is where you can choose specific websites or videos that you want to advertise on. Then there's topic targeting. So every Google web, uh, every website, sorry, has a topic that they classify themselves as. So a, a music website, an agriculture website, you can target by these topics. Then there's demographic targeting. So this is targeting by age, gender, parental status, location, language. So you can, if you want to market to females only, you can do that. If you want to market to people over a certain uh, age group, you can do that. Just don't discriminate, obviously. Uh, now on to the more interesting ones that people don't know um, exist really on Google. And these are the things that aren't available uh, on the likes of Facebook and LinkedIn but in the, quite the same way. So the great thing about Google is that you can target people by affinity audiences and in-market audiences. And these are broken into custom versions as well. I'm going to break it into two sections. So affinity audiences are where you can target people by their long-standing search behavior. So obviously Google's collecting a lot of data about us in the background. They know the kinds of topics we're interested in. They know that we've been browsing food websites. Who doesn't like food? They know if you've been browsing cat websites or dog websites, they know which <laughs> ones you like. And they can recognize if you've got that long standing history and they've created some predefined um, TV style audiences designed to reach those people. So they've got beauty mavens, for example, if you're saying beauty products, you can target people that are into that kind of thing. Foodies, bargain hunters. But beyond that, you can create your own custom affinity audiences. So if you want to target marathon runners and that isn't an available um, topic that exists from their predefined uh, rules, you can create your own by inputting select keywords and URLs that people would have been researching over a long period of time to target them. In market is very similar, but it's based on a much shorter period of time and Google can recognize when people are actively in the market for certain products or services. Again, they've got predefined uh, options available. They've got vacation rentals, wedding planning, baby and children's products. They know when you're actively searching for these things and they're putting buying signals out there and you can target those people through these options. And again, if they don't have one that fits what you're trying to target, you can create your own. So you can, again, input URLs. These could be your competitors' URLs, for example, or research sites, uh, forums, that kind of thing. Or you can in, use your keywords and thinking about that customer journey that Michael talked about in that pyramid, you can input some of those keywords in there and target people that way. But it doesn't rely on them actively searching right then and there and seeing your ad in the uh, Google search results page. It's just going to target people as they browse these other websites. Tip number two is play the long game with display. Now, display is, is different to search advertising um, in that people you're reaching people who probably haven't heard of you before. And this is going to be the first contact they've ever had with you. And they may not buy off that first visit. So you've got to consider that they might that you might not see those conversions flood in in the same way that you would necessarily with search. So set up your display ads, let them run for a while, and then look at the data um, to consider how it's uh, in uh, con contributing sorry towards those overall goals 
you can get that data on Google Analytics. There's a little area called assisted conversions. And you can see here in this example, display was the first touch point that people came to the website, but they then later on came to, to convert via different methods. So make sure you're considering the role that display is playing and don't dismiss it just because you don't see that obvious link from a conversion. You can also change your settings in Google Ads from last click to first click, and that will show you the data in the same way. Finally, nail your offering. Seems like a really obvious one, but it's particularly important with display. You've got to offer people a compelling reason for them to take action and go to your website. This is interruptive marketing. It's not waiting. This is not people actively searching for you and you're presenting an option. You, you want them to come to you. So test different call to actions. Do something that will make them take action. And don't necessarily go for the juggler and go for that hard sale straight away. It's almost like people going, buy from me now. They're not going to do it. Give them a reason to come and see what you're, wanna, what you're talking about. So think free samples, think potentially introductory discounts. They do test that. Brochures, newsletters. What, what's that first thing you want to say to people? Almost think of it like networking. What's that first conversation piece that you want to have? The really important thing with display is just getting them to your website so that you can then carry on the conversation. And that's what Michael's going to talk about now with getting more customers with remarketing. Remarketing is so important. And uh, when you consider that about 95% of all traffic will leave your website without taking any action whatsoever, the idea of getting in front of them after their visit is super important, especially if you have a product or service that requires uh, some consideration. You know, people might not just go and buy straight away. They need time to think. So getting in front of them and staying in front of them and getting them back is super important. That's what remarketing allows you to do. So remarketing ads are uh, typically displayed on the Google Display Network, but there is another uh, element to this that we will talk about as well. Got two tips here, really. The first one is super important. And again, going back to that segment, segment, segment thing that I kept talking about, it's so important to split up what you're doing to make sure that you have that personalized approach. So as you can see here, we've got a diagram um, that basically just shows uh, the flow of, of, of visitors, what they're doing, and time durations. So if you have a product that you know really requires some consideration, they're not going to convert immediately. You know, it, they they might need you know they might need more than seven days. They might need more than thirty days. But it's it's super important that you segment to make sure that your messaging in your ads is tailored to people's needs at the time. So you know what we've got here is this diagram uh, separates homepage viewers and category page viewers. So you could have a generic um, or visitors um, banner that just reminds them that you know your solicitor firm exists um, or you know using the example here bikes and cars accessories you know people might have gone to a specific product or service page on your website it makes sense to target them with a banner that is relevant to what they've been looking for so segment that and, and also you know bikes you know I don't know about you guys, but if I'm going to go and buy a bike, I, I need time to think about it. I need time to go and compare things. It might be something that takes me longer than seven days. And if it if it looks like I'm about to you know potentially fall out, I'm about to make a decision. Maybe within the eighteen to, uh, the eight to fourteen days, maybe hit them with something else. You know. Um, it, doesn't necessarily have to be a discount. It could be a blog post, why you should choose my company, for example. So tailor that message, do it by segmentation. Um, the final tip for remarketing is so important. It's something that almost everyone kind of forgets about, uh, and that's utilizing remarketing lists for search ads, RLSA. So what this is, is it's very similar to remarketing um, in, in the respect of you're not you're basically retargeting people, but you're not using the Google Display Network. You are using search. So what is going to happen here is you're going to be showing ads to people who have previously visited your website and only only that. So what that allows you to do is that allows you to bid on some more generic terms. Um, so say you might be in a really competitive area of the uh, really competitive marketplace um, and you might not want to bid on those really broad generic terms. But if you bid on them for people that have been to your website, that's a really good way to get people back. It also allows you to run search and shopping activity on a reduced budget because you'll only be reaching out to people who have been to your website before. And also use RLSA as a testing zone. So use it to test new terms, uh, use it to see what's going to work, what's not going to work with people who have already been to your website, already know you. Again, it allows you to tailor that ad text and landing pages to a specific custom audience. Um, and also one super awesome trick is you can exclude certain
certain audiences from your campaign for example past buyers now a good example here would be that i recently signed up to the disney plus app and um they, they don't need to advertise to me anymore they've got my money but they still advertise to me now if they remove me they would be saving some money there so if you offer a service that's a one-time service or a one-time only product um exclude those past buyers and you'll be saving yourself a lot of money and that's the remarketing advertising tips Thanks, Michael. So we've rattled through a lot very quickly, um, but just to recap what we've looked at, uh, we've looked at what you can do to increase your click-through rates and attract more visitors with search ads. We've looked at how you can utilize display ads to raise brand awareness and reach the people that might not actually search for you. And we've looked at how you can get these visitors coming back and buying with advanced remarketing strategies.